Hello everybody, so, um, tall, dreamy doc, Maurice Woolen, um, the interview, the police interrogation interview was released, um, not long ago, shortly after his death, um, which may have had something to do with it, which you would certainly think some kind of confidentiality or something, I'm not sure, but I just stole this off, I think, the Kapanin channel, the interview, um, <clears throat> this is a strange one. Um, this guy, it, it's always one of the cases that I think people think about when you think about the broad range of people that get got caught um, on To Catch a Predator, like the different social backgrounds and the class of people like, you know, a prominent physician, shall we say. I believe it was a cancer researcher you had people at the very bottom of the barrel, you know, unemployed people, uh, people running to avoid the creditors like you-know-who. Um, and this um, guy who is a researcher, you know, like a cancer researcher with a family, um, absolutely mental. Um, it really is. And not only, if you think about, there probably couldn't be a more, <clears throat> I was going to say tragic, but I suppose it is tragic. This guy's life has been totally destroyed. I don't think you could get a more tragic tale of someone on To Catch a Predator than this. you got like a respected guy, family, got everything it seems. Um, apart from all his faculties, obviously, and um, talk about throwing everything away. And he died. If the reports are to be believed to be true, and I don't see why not, I've looked, I've looked into it a little bit. He he killed himself. Um, he got um, he had to register as a sex offender. I believe he got away with jail, but was under some kind of house arrest, but. He got his medical license taken away, obviously. So that was huge. Um, this is a case, and he did, um, his marriage didn't last long. He had two girls. I mean, I cannot, you can draw your own conclusions as to why he killed himself. It's quite a long time after, though. But it would seem that his life just never, obviously never recovered. That's why it's such a tragic tale. It's like you get some people whose lives were just shit, you know, just a mess, um, and it's like little was lost, it doesn't have the same um, scope, but this is totally different, so th this is what makes this, this is like the beginning of the end for this guy, so let's, um, let's have a look, shall we? Like I said, my name is Steve Nelson, I'm a detective with the Petaluma Police Department. Um, first thing I'm going to do is uh, explain to you your uh, Miranda rights, okay? Okay. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during any questioning. And if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you free of charge for any questioning if you want. Okay? So, I'd like to talk about what what happened today, okay? Um, let me just want to just confirm some information about you. Your name is Maurice Wollen? Okay, if, if I can yes. have you verbalize. Yes. Okay, thank you. I mean, it's, it's just a state of shock, isn't it? You know, it's like, I, I can't imagine what it must be like to be in that situation. Well, I can imagine. I mean, you think about, I think we've all had, when you get to a certain stage in life, we've all had moments hopefully not that many, where something went terribly wrong. Something went the catastrophe. 
and you think to back to that moment how you reacted how you felt like your whole world is destroyed and some people react very differently some people are like in a state of shock I, you know everything that must be going through his brain at this minute his family his job the cameras were there like it's just it couldn't get any bigger and we don't know how often he tried this before Scenic Avenue. In Piedmont? Yes. Okay. And your birth date is 228 of 58? Correct. Okay. What um, our screen name do you use? You see, he's not going to know what to say. I cannot understand. This is what I don't get about these scenarios. Um... Don't say a fucking thing. If this was me, I wouldn't say a word. Not a word. That would be the best thing to do. But I think you're in a state of panic. You're in a state of shock. You know, you kind of know you're fucked. But maybe you're trying to... I don't know. It's, it depends on the type of person that you are. And I think 99% of people are going to think, how am I going to get out of this? Yeah. I really need to have an attorney and present. Okay. Okay. Um, can you tell me what's going to happen? Smart move. What's going to happen? Um, you're being charged with, uh, I believe, I believe uh, attempt lewd acts with a child under the age of 14 and uh, burglary. Burglary? Yes. Okay. Stealing what? by entering the dwelling that you did. Okay? So at that point, I'm going to bring you back over to booking. You'll be transported to the Sonoma County Sheriff's. Am I going to jail? Uh, yeah. Okay? Steve, I've never done anything wrong in my life. <laughs> and it's kind of amazing what the brain will bring to the surface in times like this. This is an intelligent, educated guy. I've never done anything wrong. Please let me go. It's like, dude, that's not going to wash. But like I said, everybody's going to react differently. You're going to have some people who are not nearly as intelligent that are going to just accept it. But intelligence is, you know, it's very um, varied, shall we say. There's different forms of intelligence just because he's clever academically. Doesn't mean that he's brave. It doesn't mean that he's emotionally intelligent. Um, you know, there's many different ways of looking at it. Ever. You know my record. Okay. I've never had more than traffic ticket. Right, so we should just let you off with this then. You know, if, if somebody just shoots three people or whatever, it's like, uh, why did you do this today? Well, I've never, uh, I've only ever got a parking ticket once. Can you please let, yeah, okay. What? What, what? what happens when I get to the Sonoma County Jail? Um, we'll talk to you. <laughs> You're going to get, oh, never mind. Or, or anything like that. Other than that, you could probably be in jail until Tuesday. What did I steal? Okay, that's what I told you. It's not about stealing. What did I? Okay. What did What did I take? Okay, let me just. Yeah, you've got the burglary aspect wrong here, dude. It just means if you enter a premises within with a certain intent, you know, you can get done with with those kind of charges. I don't think that'd wash over in England, but. Stop you for a second. You asked to talk to an attorney. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to discuss this further because I can't. Okay. Unless you want to waive your right to have an attorney present. Can I call my wife? Um, you will be able In the middle of an interrogation? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, sweetheart, uh, I'm just being interviewed by Steve. Yeah, he kind of wants to know what I was trying to do, you know, when I was entering the house to fuck a kid. What? We'll make a call later on. I need to call. 
color now. I, I'm not going to base this on. Do you still want to have an attorney present? I will answer what I can. Okay. So again, I just want to make this clear that um, if you do not wish to have an attorney present, that you want to talk to me about what happened today. But I, I may decline to answer if I think it's incriminating. Okay. Maurice. I'm, I, scared. I'm not going to play games I'm here. not playing games. I'm scared out of my mind. Right. And I, and I understand that. You saw my record. I've never done anything wrong in my life. Okay. And now I'm being charged with very serious offenses. Okay. There's rules I have to go by. The fact that you've asked to speak to an attorney, okay, I have to visit that. And I have to respect your constitutional rights. All right, let's talk. Okay. So I just want to clear, you want to talk to me without the presence of an attorney. But I'm also making clear that I'm not going to answer things that I think could damage me. I think he's just in his brain. He's like, you know, he's a problem solver. He's scientifically minded. He's going to be like, right, what can I do now to get out of this situation? Or at least make myself look the best. He's like, right, I'll go down this road. I'm not going to say anything stupid. I don't, and this is what I'm gathering. Uh, but I'll see if I can kind of wriggle out of it. Because I'm in a desperate situation, I'll try and make it better. That's the only way I'm kind of thinking that he's going down. Just shut up. Don't say a word. I wouldn't even confirm my name if that was me. Now, not to say that I've got experience with these matters. <laughs> what screen name do you go by? Um, I use tall green dots. Okay. You see, that I do not understand that. Like, he's just... That's pretty much admitted his guilt there and then the case over case closed i mean it's it's closed anyway but there'd always there'd al there'll always be a minor chance of getting off on a technicality or something or something you know like some route you can go down people have got out or worse and he's going to have a decent legal team behind him because uh, he's got a bit of coin uh, and he's just admitted his screen name. His screen name will confirm the conversation, will confirm that that's what he wrote, will confirm everything that he turned up. Unbelievable. Is that uh, a Yahoo? Yes. Website? Okay. Why did you come to uh, the house in Petaluma today? Um, I was curious. Okay. Curious about what? Um, I chatted with someone online. She had um, asked to meet me on several occasions. I declined. Today again, she asked. I had a little bit of time, not very much, okay. because I have to be home to pick my wife up. And so I thought I would come out and meet her and nothing more. Okay. Okay. So he's going down the route of, I just came just to have a chat. That's it. And you know what? How can you prove otherwise? You cannot... I think a jury would find you guilty, as they always do in these cases, or at least most of them plead. But you can't categorically prove what was in someone's brain. We know. You know, but uh, we know you know, you know. How old was the, the person you were chatting with? I'm not sure. How old did she tell you? I don't know. So she, you don't know? You don't remember? I don't remember. I know she was young, and I know that... Under 18? I'm not sure. Okay. How old are you? 48. 48? 48? Okay. Do you remember the, the person, the name of the person that you were coming to visit? I mean, he's saying it 
doesn't remember how old the girl was. Kind of like, I don't remember. I mean, it's not going to wash. But what is in this situation? You know, oh, I thought she was 21 or whatever. You know, that's his... He's, he's just... He's just struggling, isn't he? He's in an impossible situation. Willow. Willow. Is that male, female? Female. Female? Okay. And uh, what location were you coming to? Um, I don't remember the address. Do you remember the street name? I don't. It was in Petaluma. Okay. Did you write it down, directions, or anything that you... I wrote it down earlier okay. when she gave it to me. Okay. Is that in your car? What made you think that the girl was under age, the age of 18? Uh, she was young. I I don't remember exactly what she said. I do know that um, I didn't um, intend to do anything because I didn't have any time, and I was just, I was, to be quite honest with you, just curious. Okay. When you were chatting with her, uh, do you remember her screen name? Positive. She messaged me a couple times too. Okay. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do is maybe I can refresh your memory. Um, did you ever talk about? I mean, what kind of things did you talk about in the chats? Just, just playing. What kind of playing? Just, just talking. Okay. I don't remember the specifics. Do you remember when you started chatting with her? What date? Uh, it was either yesterday or the day before. So yesterday would have been the... Oh, wait. 25th? Maybe yesterday. 25th. Um, do you remember talking to her on the 23rd of August? So that would have been uh, Wednesday? No. Okay. Did I? Yeah, there's chats here. You're talking tall, dreamy, under slash, doc. That's you. Talking with I, Willow Filipino. I don't, I don't remember it being in the conversation. She wanted me to come visit her, okay. and I didn't want to come. What What name do you use besides Tall Dreamy Doc? Do you use a, another name, like a false name that you use when you meet people? I have a nickname. What's that? Mo or Marco. Marco. Okay. And then if you told her that you were Marco in San Francisco. That would have been accurate. Sometimes, yeah. Okay. Um, then on August 24th, you're chatting with her, and you tell her, I'm Marco, by the way, in San Francisco. She said, thanks, I'm Willow. Okay. Um, I'm in the 707. I'm 13 female. What's your ASL? And then you say, oh, goodness, I'm 29. Sorry. Is that accurate? I don't remember. But would that be accurate that you... I don't I, remember. I mean, does anybody else use your computer? I, I don't I don't know. I don't remember those that, those words. I don't remember her okay. age. But obviously you knew she was under the age of 18, so... I you knew that knew she was young. Okay. Did you ask her if she dated older guys? I don't remember. Okay. Did you talk to her about... Well, at least it's kind of like no comment. Isn't it? I don't remember. You know, he's not... He's, let's see. he's trying to be as clever as he possibly can, but... Touching and kissing and making each other feel good? <laughs> I remember she saying that she had trouble finding somebody to make her feel good. Okay. Oh, good on you, dude. You, you, you know, always happy to help. And then you uh, typed to her, I wouldn't stop until you came over and over. Get out of that one, tall, dreamy doc. <laughs> um, you talk to her about kissing her chest. I don't remember. Uh, just a question, a phone number. 510-402-4023. Uh, Where's that? Uh, one of my clients. So it was just a phony number you gave? No, no, it uh, wasn't phony. Okay, so it's a real number? It's 
the way to get a hold of you? Um, no, no, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what number it was. I mean, it's not my home, mm -hmm. so. What's your cell? 415-244-1422. Yeah, there's no point bleeping that out now. Ash Nelson, can I call He's not one? getting any phone calls where he is. You'd be able to call her when we're done. when she gave you the address of where she lived? Um, no, but I know she wanted me to come yesterday and I told her I wouldn't. Okay. Oh, well, that's uh, all right then, isn't it, dude? Did, uh, uh, how was she, did she tell you how she was able to have you come over? She said she was alone. Okay. You didn't know where her parents were? She begged me to come over. And oh. I don't know how you guys, I mean, if you read, sure. when I told her I wouldn't come, she said she was begging me to come. Okay. On uh, August 24th, so that would have been uh, Thursday, uh, you said, Willow, I would like to, but I could get in trouble, meaning, yeah. you know, for her coming yeah. over. Okay. So that's accurate you said that? I don't remember. Okay. And then you told her, no, I'm real, but you're under 18 and I'm over. We would have to be so careful. Saying that, but I told her that she needed to be. I was concerned about her. She needed to be careful. Okay. No, he remembers that. He doesn't remember anything else. Do you remember talking to her or asking her, "Do you like the French?" Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> Did you ever see a picture of her? Um, I think she has pictures. Okay. So you, you commented about her body looking yeah. pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember. And then you asked her what. As a uh, it's a good question in that. You know, it's like you've seen a picture. He can't really get out of that because he's kind of like, this is why it's better for him to just stay silent completely because he's like, I don't remember, I don't remember. He saw a pic because he's, he's engaged in a conversation with him. If you go no comment, you're not engaged in any kind of conversation. You're just not going to answer any questions. But he's kind of like not answering anything incriminating virtually. Well, I say that, but he made the fundamental mistake of admitting his screen name. Boss size she wore, and she said 30B, but it's kind of big on me right now. I can still grow it. Um, I don't remember her saying that. Okay, and saying that you would kiss them. I don't remember. I remember saying her to be careful and she can get in trouble and she oh can... he remembers all that he remembers all the things that he said that might be perceived as being nurturing or even thoughtful but he doesn't remember all the sexual talk so he's kind of saying <sighs> you can't have one without the other it's like the edit he's not going to go down the lawn route and say the chat log was edited yeah everything nice is said uh, it's true, but, oh, everything else, I don't remember. I mean, he's just, like I said, he's just trying to be clever, but he's in a no-win situation. It's like, what are you going to do, you know? Doing this. Okay. And that's why I didn't come. And the only reason I came today, I was curious, but I wasn't going to do anything. I had no intention to do anything. And if you read that, you can tell that uh, over and over again, I said that both I shouldn't come, she should be careful. But I'm also reading, and, and, and I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you're talking about um, that you want her to take your pants off. Um, when? You talk about, you know, what will you wear? I don't know what, whatever, whatever's clean something sexy and you said will you take it off for me and then you ask her that you want her to take your your her pants off also you can you can take mine off if you want I wasn't so going how to do, do you want to do it I wasn't going to do anything okay I, I'm but just you're, telling, 
here you're telling me you're concerned for her welfare. But you read on, and I was playing with her. It was a mistake. That was not appropriate. But then when you read on, I said. It's kind of an admission. I was playing with her. He realizes what he said, and then goes, that was not appropriate. And now he's trying to wriggle out of it. Day over and over it's again. like you can't blame these guys in, in some way. I know everybody's going to take the moral high ground and they oh, why didn't you just admit it? And Would you? I mean, you wouldn't get involved in this, but you get the point. If you'd have got caught doing something you shouldn't, because we all fucking do things, you know, not necessarily breaking the law, but you're just going to admit to it and give vo voluntarily give away your freedom. That she shouldn't be doing this. I can't come see you. She begs me to come. Officer Nelson, I... I shouldn't have talked to her. You're right. I wasn't have, going to do anything. Have you ever done this before? No. Never? Never met a 13-year-old? On the internet, yeah. Never. No. I mean, you told her you were a doctor. Officer Nelson, you have to believe me. I would never done anything to her. Okay, Maurice, I, I'm just reading your chats, and, and you know, you're talking about being concerned for her, and you're asking her, will you suck me, and uh, I want you to taste me. I mean, he's tried, he's tried the subtle line of questioning, and he's remained calm, he's trying to, like, get out of it, it's very clever. Even though we kind of can't, he can deny it up until the point where he goes into the most graphic elements. It's like, there's no explaining that. You cannot, and he's an intelligent, I know I keep saying that, but he's going to know how ludicrous it sounds. There's some that have got no self-awareness of the process they're in. They don't have any empathy, so they can't understand the position of the, the authorities. And they don't care. He does. So he's starting to get frustrated now. He's starting to get, he's panicking, he's getting emotional, he's scared, he's like shaking his head, he's, you know, his body movement. Because there's no getting away from that. He knows, because he's, you know, he's admitted his screen name, he says he was involved in that conversation, it's like, are you going to blow me and all that kind of stuff? It's like, you're fucked. Remember, but I never would have done anything to her. And then you but show up. I mean, where do you live? Piedmont? How long did it take you to get here? 40 minutes. Where's your wife right now? Uh, at a party. So where does she think you're at work? No, I told her I would go out for a little while. I never and would have done anything. I never had any I mean, intention. I didn't have time to do anything, first of all. Second, I think... You can read a lot out of that, I agree, and I don't claim to have said all of it, but you also read that I didn't want to come, that she begged me to come over and over again, and I was curious. That was all. Curious so as to what? what? if you saw her there? Nothing. So you drove 40 minutes from Piedmont to meet a 13-year-old. That nothing would have happened. That's right. Can you expect me to believe that? It's after true. You, after you talk about having it's the truth. different sexual it's the truth. acts with her, it's the truth. She begged me to come, and I know that doesn't make it right, but it happened. Well, I'm pretty sure the begging wasn't as intense as he's making out, and I'm pretty sure he wasn't hesitant. And it doesn't matter anyway, does it? have access to it? Yeah. It's yours? Yeah, everybody has access to it. Okay. Who else is in the house that... I have two kids, a wife. I never would have done anything. Any other computer be besides the Apple? 
in a home or in use by me? Yeah. I'm sorry. Both. Oh, we have three other computers. At home. But I don't use the other ones very much. Are they desktops or yeah. desktops? Must be terrible for Is the family any, uh, if you have, you have child pornography on your computer at hope. this point right now. No. no. Any adult pornography? Mm -hmm. Is there any child pornography in the house? No. No, I'm not used to that stuff. <laughs> well, you are to some degree, um, dude. In your vehicle, there was some lingerie in the back. There was? Yeah. It's not my car, it's my wife's car. It's your wife's car? Okay. Oh, she having an affair? <laughs> Seems kind of morbid to laugh about this. It's like it seems kind of morbid to laugh at it because he's dead. I know people are not going to care, but it's like his family and his daughters. It's like it, it, it's ruined lives. Can you imagine he's like his colleagues as well and his patients? Size-wise, brass. No I, size. I, I mean, is she five? How tall? Uh, how much does she? For a brass. <laughs> I'm just curious. How big are your wife's tits? <laughs> well, actually, now you mention it, she's pretty. Hey, tell you what, Steve. Uh, you can have a go on my wife if you let me go. How does that sound? Uh, yeah, all right then. So you didn't bring any of that lingerie for absolutely not for Willow. Absolutely not. No, he wouldn't do that. I didn't even know there was he wanted to bone her without any clothes on. Lingerie. No. No, oh, no. Could possibly. No, okay. We don't carry lingerie in our car. Okay. You sure it's not kids' clothing? It, it's not kids' clothing. Send her any pictures? No. Is this a picture of you? Yeah. Were you wearing a wig? I just had my hair done. <laughs> down. I wouldn't be able to pull that one off, pal. When can I speak to an attorney? So, so at this point, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, what can you say? You've already said too much, me old right, fella. Time's approximately 1438. Can I call my wife? I'll walk you over to the trailer. Wow. Wow. And that is that. Tragic, sad, depressing, morbid. Um, that is how you ruin your life. It's just... I'd love to know what sent him down this path. I find it very interesting. It's like he's got everything and he's thrown it all away just for whatever it was, you know, whatever fantasy that he would that he had. He obviously thought he was going to get away with it, but there was obviously some he knew there was a risk. I mean, the, tempt the law for some people is just too strong. He's obviously, the, the, the sort of compulsions and attractions he, have, he has, he may have been battling all his life. It may be somebody who had everything and just wanted to, you know, do something a bit, I don't know, it's, it's very difficult. There's many types of different predators. There's them like McFetridge that are just kind of seem to be genetically wired to be attracted to these. They have child porn on the computer and then there's some that kind of like this thrill. They clearly have no integrity, which for somebody in his position is just... It's like everything that he's achieved in his life at that point has been destroyed. And then he commits suicide. What a way to go. That's why it's morbid. You know, it's not like... It's not pleasant for anybody, you know. It's good that he got 
caught and it didn't happen to a real person. You know, that's, as far as we know, that's the only thing that we can take away from this. So, yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little, um, this um, look at um, this guy. And, uh, yeah, just leave any comments, um, anything that you're thinking about it. And I'll speak to you soon. Take it easy.